element is close to the bottom of the yeah. reservoir. All the fluid leaving the reservoir would decrease the bulk density there, but I feel like that's really negligible. Okay. In okay. consideration of the like, like thousands of feet. So yeah, my, my my question here really is, all this rock on top of this is it going to change no. weight as function of time because we are depleting, let's say, a a ten feet layer of sand. Not very likely, right? So the overburden is going to stay constant. The total stress uh, is going to stay constant. There are some cases in which there's something which is called arcing, stress arcing, that that it comes of forms a cavity here. But but let's not discuss that right now. Let's say this is a soft rock, and then as this one compacts, uh, all the, the weight is still applied on top of this. SV is going to remain constant, uh, very much uh, constant. What is going to increase with time is what? Now that we know a little bit more about stresses, you can see that this was the original effective vertical stress. And now with time, your vertical stress, effective vertical stress has increased. Pore pressure went, went down, and the load that was taken before by pore pressure now has to be taken by the solid skeleton. And that's why the vertical effective stress increases. So your SH minimum goes down when pore pressure decreases, when the reservoir decreases? Yes, <coughs> but let's not get into that right now, OK? Uh, that's uh, something we're going to see uh, later on. Uh, but, but you're right. Your SH your total stresses, horizontal stresses, will go down with depletion, but your effective stresses will go up with depletion. But let, let's just com now concentrate on this case. Well, in this particular case, as a result of the increased effective stress, this element of rock is going to get smaller, and it's going to get smaller just in the vertical direction. <coughs> Uh, for the same things that we have said before, because it, this reservoir is l relatively thin and long, so that H is much more than L, and because of that, we're just going to have deformations in this direction. Um, that's something we have already seen in elasticity, right? But, but just hang, hang there a minute, and we'll get back to that, because we're going to need some equations for that. But uh, the whole thing I'm going to, uh, to say here is that we need to define pore compressibility because that's what we need in our reservoir simulator. When you do your senior design class, instead of just assuming a random value, uh, now you can make a more educated guess. So the CF, pore compressibility, rock compressibility, uh, in geomechanics, uh, we have a, some, a little bit more of a strict definition. We call it CPP. But it's the same thing, OK? And the definition is this is a change in pore volume, percentual change of pore volume. That's why it's divided the original pore volume, due to a change in pore pressure. This tells me how much the pore space is going to change uh, if I change the pore pressure, OK? OK, so we our objective is going to be to find an equation to tell what is this as a function of elasticity. Yes? What is that character on top of this piece? Here? Yeah, there the, it's a one. It's a one. This one is a one. Yes, one divided by VP, where, where VP is the pore volume, and PP is the pore pressure, OK? OK, but before we do that, let's use another definition, which is the bulk rock compressibility. And that value, it goes by 
CBP, it's not CPP, CBP, B from bulk, and it's defined as the change in bulk volume, the percentual change, again, that's why it's divided, the original bulk volume, due to a change in pore pressure. I'm going to make an assumption now. Yes. Um, I guess this is from like other classes, but they tend to always have a negative because uh, why, yes. is, why is in this case you don't have a negative? I don't have a negative because I'm considering compression positive. Okay. Uh, but um, some other times you can have a negative. Okay. And some other times also I forget a negative sign. <laughs> but, but believe me, in this case, the, the sign is not an important thing. Uh, let, let me go one more step. I'm going to say something which is not, not all the time is true, okay? But I'm going to assume it, that whenever I do a depletion, all the change in pore volume, or all the change in bulk volume, it goes into change of pore volume. Uh, which is all the times I repeat, it's not, it's not the same, but this is an assumption to make our equations a little bit easier. So if I do that, I can write again the pore compressibility as one over BP, but now what I'm going to do is, uh, I'm just writing the same over here, okay? But instead of DVP, I'm going to write PVB because I know it's the same, divided by PP, and I'm going to divide this by VB. Could you move the page up? Oh, uh, yes. So, uh, this, this is what I did. I just replaced this one by that one from that equation. Uh, I'm just saying now, I'm going to divide all of this by VB. But at the same time, I'm going to divide all this one by dB, so the equality still holds. So, what is the volume of the pore divided by volume? Porosity. It's porosity. What is this? Notice that this one is just CVP the bulk uh, compressibility. And we'll go one more step. Um, the compressibility, and let me uh, draw this again over here. The bulk compressibility, CVP, under conditions in which there is just change of strain in one direction, is equal, it's just the compressibility, to one over the constraint modulus. Where the constraint modulus was exactly, uh, all this quantity over here that depends on the young modulus. The compressibility in units of one over pressure is the inverse of the stiffness. And in this case, the stiffness is that constraint module. So as a result then, our pore compressibility is just going to be one over porosity times the constraint modulus that you can calculate if you know what is your young modulus and your uh, Poisson ratio. So uh, th this is you know, one more application of elasticity that uh, we're going to, to use. And this way you can calculate what is uh, compressibility uh, for these uh, types of rocks. Uh, compressibility sometimes, rock compressibility is not that important. If you have a reservoir which is super large and it uh, has well, it's well connected to other uh, to other formations hydraulically, but if it's a closed compartment, uh, compressibility is, is quite important. Yes? 
Oh, I was just going to ask, since you made that assumption that the poor volume is the same as the bulk volume, is that yeah. giving you an extreme like case? It's, it's not that part of the actual case. So what that is assuming is that whenever you're compressing the rock, all that compression is going into reduction of pore volume. In fact, the minerals, the grains themselves, they also compress, but it, at a tiny bit, not much. It depends on, in tight rocks, a, lo a lot more compression goes into the minerals than you would have in a conventional rock, because usually they have higher porosity. But it's, it's not far from the actual body. Okay, uh, I think guys, we have uh, time for one more thing. Uh, before we go to that, what are the units of M? PSI. It's in a stiffness, so it's units of pressure or stress to be rigorous. And what are going to be the units of compressibility? One over PSI. One over pressure. And these units, or CBP or CPP, uh, sometimes they can be a little bit off. And usually in petroleum engineering, we use something which is a unit called 10 to the minus 6 psi to the minus 1. And since people don't like to write that all the time, they just call it a micro sip. So a micro sip will be kind of like the inverse of the PSI, right? So that's where it comes from. A micro is 10 to the minus 6. I noticed that in exams, in past uh, occasions, I always have people asking me what is micro, uh, what is uh, mega, and things like that. Remember, micro is 10 to the minus 6. M for mega, as in megapascals, is 10 to the 6. Uh, K, as in kilo, is 10 to the 3. OK? Uh, all right. So. I think we're almost on time. I know I have time to introduce the next topic, but I have one example over here that probably you can solve at home that in order to how to calculate compressibility. And let me see. Okay, here. So this is the same thing that we did over here. And here you have an example. Um, you, you know uh, what is the porosity of the rock. You know the Young modules. You know the, the Poisson ratio. And uh, based on the questions we have seen before, you can calculate what is the constraint modules in, in units of pressure. And in this case, you have to convert it to PSI in order to get micro sieve. And then uh, you use that into that equation, and you will get the values of compressibility in micro sieves. Oh, something very important. I almost forgot. Uh, 30 more seconds. What are typical values of compressibility? Just I make sure that you don't get the wrong value. Two negative six negative seven. They go more or less uh, from I would say one, sometimes less than one. If you have a very tight rock, to about twenty or sometimes more micro sieves. So something uh, very uh, stiff and not compressible is around one. Something very compressible is around twenty. All right, guys, uh, we'll talk about a little bit more about this on Friday and about the homework on Friday. All right? Be safe to the lab.